Did they have a field day today. Ooh, that right-wing fascist on the radio. Let's see, he read gun magazines when he was young. He liked the cowboy when he was young. He, had, he was on the rifle team when he was young. He was a Boy Scout. Oh, my God. Why wasn't he girlified earlier? Why wasn't he put on a drug to rein in all of those masculine impulses of his? Why was he not sissified at an early age? Let's see if we can pass a new DSMA uh, uh, regulation. Over-obsession with being a man. That's an illness now that has to be medicated. Desire to become a man, not a boy. Another illness. Uh, too much testosterone has to be removed by the state. Yeah, keep laughing all you want. It's okay to me. I enjoy it. I enjoy all of this stuff. 1982, I found a story I wrote, which I cannot even give you the title. It's too original. It was about a future America run by obese, mean, lesbian feminists. That's all I can tell you. I wrote it in 1982. Now I wake up and take a look at your universities today. Who's running them? What they're doing to the colleges. Take a look at what just happened down in Kentucky. Where a Christian clerk, a county clerk, a small job, refused to grant a marriage license to a lesbian couple because it was against her religion and they put her in jail. In jail now. No fine jail. You're telling me that's not fascism? So my vision from 1982 is clear. I made a decision over the weekend. My next thing I'm going to do on my own is I'm going to take that little book I wrote about this futuristic American world that we're now living in that I wrote in 82, and I'm going to try to illustrate it if I can, although I may just use my own watercolors over the last few years, which don't match the book exactly, but they sort of do, and intersperse them, and I'm going to sell it online. Just put it online for a dollar a download. I'm not going to go the publisher out. It's a classic. It'll be good as The Little Prince by Santé Zupere. I can't give the title away. It'll be stolen immediately. There are very few original ideas in the world. I don't know how to manage the download thing, though. There's so much stuff I'd like to do, but I don't know how to do that whole computer thing. And I, I ask people, they don't know how to do it. Then they find sites, they don't know how to do it. How do you encrypt it so no one can rob your story? Let's say I put it on the Internet. My story, and you have to pay a dollar. You click, bump, pay a dollar, and you get it. How do you keep them from sharing it with other people? For nothing. I don't understand that part of it. I'd like to just do it. I mean, for a dollar is nothing for you to get that book. I'd love to produce that on my own. I have other, other old stories, old found early savage writings that I'd like to post on the Internet for a buck. I, I'm not thinking it's going to be as big a hit as, you know, Stop the Coming Civil War or, uh, you know, Government Zero. But I, I know there's a market for it, whatever the number is, because people would like that as part of their collection. Since we're talking about dead horses. I'm trying to think what to do with my archives now. I'm thinking of burning all of my journals. Would you believe it, Robert? I, I swear I've reached that point. For two years now, three years now, I've been working on my journals that were written between 1963 and I don't know when, the 90s. Then I went into radio and stopped writing journals. I never wrote another journal because this is a journal up to a point. The radio show is an open book to a certain extent. I mean, I'm not insane. An insane man would get up here and tell you every little detail. Nobody does that. I give you just enough to get a feeling for what's going on. But the point is, I look at these books, and I had six years of them transcribed, 63 to 69, and World Net Daily is about to publish them next year. And I looked at it. I got cold feet over the weekend. And I said, I don't want to publish it. Then I said, I do want to publish it. And I'll just, so as I'm going through, like, why would you want to even do that? Who cares? So I actually had a vision of burning all of my journals. One day, backyard, fireplace, a uh, stern of uh, fluid, light of fluid, and a match. Burn my entire past. Robert says yes. Burn the past. Yeah, I just thought of it because well, who cares? You think the children are going to want to read that garbage? It's just the sufferings of young Vertha. All my complaints are in the book. All these journals. I once said to a uh, mystical rabbi from Europe, another I'm from Russia now, not an American type, not a Bagels and Locks rabbi, <laughs> not that type. Not a Berkeley uh, reformed Jewish rabbi. This was an old style guy, smoked, obese, a real man in other words. He wasn't a jogger. He was a prayer. So I told him I, I, keep, I, I keep journals. I write everything about my life in these books. He looked at me, took a puff and a cigarette, and he says, well, I said, I want God to know when I meet him what I did. He says, really? He says, let me tell you something. God wants to know what you didn't put in the books. <laughs> these guys are so smart. 
I love these guys. They had such sharp answers. They would have been great in radio in their day if they had talk radio. But you can't sustain three hours of that. These one-liners are great if you're a religious uh, genius. With someone who comes to you, you can give a line like that. God will want to know what you didn't put in the books. Boom. That's a rim shot. But try doing that for three straight hours. It doesn't work. You know, I'm starting to think I like the Catholic thing with confession. I'm not a Catholic, but man, they surely perfected this whole thing about guilt. I never saw anything like it. I was watching Gray Donovan. I always knew about the confession, but didn't really get it. What a genius who ever figured that out. Who was the guy in the Catholic religion who came up with the confessional? I mean, it wasn't in the Bible. Someone figured it out. That you sit in the booth, you tell your secrets, they can't tell the cops. They can't tell your husband nothing. They can't tell your teacher nobody. Your shrink doesn't even know what you tell a priest. And it's, it's immune, immune from the law. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, this is still now, it's still immune from the law, but tomorrow, who knows what will be immune from the law. They'll put microphones yet in the confessional. That'll come next with the new pope. But anyway, I thought about what a wonderful system that was. Look how smart Freud was. He took the confessional, which was free, and he put a dollar amount on it. What a genius Sigmund Freud was. So all this free psychiatry, what are they, nuts? I figured out a field now where you come and tell me your problems. I, you charge me three, I charge you $300 an hour, and you have to leave after one hour, and you're never cured. Because there's original sin and there's ongoing sin. What an incredible genius Freud was to monetize the confessional. I, th I never thought about it that way. What a smart man. He monetized the confessional. Incredible genius. <laughs> Are any of you enjoying this out there or what? You want me to go back to the regular stuff? Are they listening to me? Where are they? The ratings are up, but they must... I don't see calling now. I got calls on dead animals, dead horses. I ran deal. I'm, I'm way past that. Now I'm into uh, death, dying, psychiatry, <laughs> confessionals. <laughs> I, this is what I like to do more than anything on earth. I'm having a good time. It must be the fish. It's the uh, tuna, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the organically grown line caught hippie tuna. It make you think that the fish wanted to be caught. I love these restaurants, line caught, sustainable. The animal couldn't wait to be caught and have its head cut off and bled to death on a deck. But uh, I'm giddy from it. No one's calling on this. They're, they're fanatical. They're on another station calling about Trump and about the Iran deal. I did that two hours ago. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. I just asked some guys who are Catholic who work here. Uh, they said in the third grade, you confess already? I can't imagine. Eight years old, what a kid does wrong. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. What could a kid do? He touched himself. That's the number one thing they go in the confessional for. Well, maybe they stole something. Who knows? They snatched a piece of candy. What's it the church's business if you touch yourself? I don't understand. Why would you subject a kid to that? That's pretty weird. It makes guilt. Like, like it, it just kind of like embeds guilt in a person that he's no good. I don't know. Look, I, every teacher's own religion is weird. Every religion is different. As I say, I think it's a brilliant idea, confessions. You sit in the booth and you say what you did wrong, and the guy says you're forgiven, and then you get free to do it again. You're relieved of your guilt eternally, over and over again. I love it. It costs you nothing, too, on top of it all. And Freud charged 300 an hour. He invented a system now, 400 an hour. And if they can't do it, they give you a drug to go with it. And you come back again uncured. And you keep coming back for the... I know a guy... A wealthy kid, I swear, his father died, left him a fortune, never worked a day in his life. This kid, kid, he's 65, 70 now, kid, he's like a kid. He's still in therapy. He's been in therapy 50 years, 45 years. Four times a week, he goes and sits and tells the uh, psychiatrist his problems. If he converted to Catholicism and invested the money, think about that. I just thought, I mean, if this kid had converted, <laughs> he was an atheist. But if he had converted to Catholicism and went into the confessional all these years and put the money away that he was giving the psychiatrist and put it into real estate in London, you know what he'd be worth today? 
<laughs> uh, that's an interesting idea. That's a stand-up shot. <clears> that's <throat> how I get away from gloom. I try to tell sardonic humor. I get depressed. I start thinking about the dog and the high, the, the dust and the, the ashes in the bar. I don't want Teddy to die. You know, you look at him. Every bite now. What's wrong with me? Every bite of the dog. He doesn't feel it. He's not worried I'm going to die. I walk past another guy with a dog. How old is he, I ask? Oh, I, nine. And we go, hmm, terrible. It's like horrible. How old's your dog? Nine. Hmm, terrible thing. Yeah, that's the writer he's talking about. <laughs> is there death in the air or something? What is going on? Is it because Obama is like the doctor of, of doom? Is this guy so filled with emanating doom and gloom about the world? Has he so poisoned the world? I don't think I'm the only one into this right now. How old is your dog? Oh, he's 11. Oh, that's sorry. Sorry to hear it. No, he's a young dog. Yeah, but he only lived to 15. No, but little dogs live to 18. It's terrible, the imagery. Then they, every movie now have to turn off and they go to a graveyard with the hole. Every movie, that, and the movies are so dark. Every movie, they're digging a, a, a grave in a desert now. What's Hollywood's obsession now with graves in the desert? That's the next thing they do from their yacht in the Caribbean? All right, put in graves now in the desert. And see if you can put down religion a little more. All right, a little more anti-religion. A little less on the violence there. They're going nuts on the guns. Uh, put in, push in a little more suicide. It won't make the papers and connect it to us too much. All right, leave me alone. I'm heading to Khan right now. Uh, have a nice day, yeah. <laughs> I have imaginary dialogues in my own mind. Put that down now, Mr. Psychiatrist. Go ahead. Let's see. I loved gun magazines as a young boy. Was on the rifle team. Boy Scout. Uh, let's see. What else? Loved jungles, loved jungles. He loved uh, uh, all sorts of stuff like Cub Scout, Boy Scout. Spent years alone in the in the tropics in the collecting plants. Oh God, put that together, Doctor. Whew. Now he's a right winger on the radio. But how come I agree with him? That's the problem. Then the psychiatrist needs a therapist. He goes to his doctor. He says, "I've been listening to this guy ridiculing him so long. I actually started to agree with him. What's wrong with me?" So then the, uh, the doctor's doctor says, well, I don't know, tell me what he says. Before long, they're talking about me. And then the two psychiatrists have to go to the next psychiatrist and say, what's wrong with them? They actually agree with me, even though they're liberals and humanitarians. This is what happens when you start to think. It's very dangerous, doctors. Doctor, I guarantee you, if you start to think, you get in real trouble. <laughs> My father, God rest his soul, was an atheist, and he taught me to think. He taught me the truth is more important than anything on earth. I didn't know what the truth meant, but he sure made me know what the truth was. He didn't let me get away with any fibbing. Ah, do I tell everybody the truth? No. But him I did. I was afraid of him. And I had no cho I had no choice. I was a little kid. I was terrified of him. Now that I'm not afraid of people, I can uh, get away with fibbing a little bit. I mean, what do you think? Why, you don't? Who listening to this show? Here's what Jesus would say to you. Let he who is without sin throw the first stone. Let he who was listening to this show who does not lie... Tell me that you don't lie. Tell me you don't lie. Tell me listening to the show that you don't lie. You try not to. You try not to do the 10, the big 10. Everyone tries to avoid the big 10 if they're sane, unless you vote for Obama. Then the big 10 becomes your mantra. That's your playbook. You do the big 10. If you're a Democrat, you make sure you do everything the big 10 tells you not to do. You commit adultery, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you rat out your neighbor, you steal your neighbor's mule, whatever. But you do it for the good of humanity because you're a Marxist. It's for the good of mankind that you steal their, I mean, their mule. <laughs> I always confuse those two animals. I don't like that. I think the Bible got that word wrong. It, it makes you uncomfortable. You shall not covet thy neighbor's mule. I, I mean, it doesn't say mule, okay? It's the other thing. I don't like it. I don't like the word.